Lesson 13.2b, Finding Probability Using a Tree Diagram. A tree diagram is a branching diagram that shows all possible combinations or outcomes of an event. A probability tree diagram can help us display and count outcomes of theoretical probabilities of compound events. Bob has two pairs of shoes, black and brown. He has three shirts, a white, a beige, and a striped. And he has two pairs of pants, blue and gray. Each combination is equally likely. Find the probability of Bob choosing an outfit at random and getting black shoes, white shirt, gray pants. We can make a tree diagram to find the sample space for the compound event. So he has two pairs of shoes. He has a black pair and a brown pair. And we draw our tree diagram to extend to the three different shirts, the white, the beige, and the striped for the black shoes, and the white, the beige, and the striped for the brown shoes. From the white shirt, we make the tree diagram go off to blue and gray pants. The beige shirt shows blue and gray pants. The striped shirt shows blue and gray pants. And we do the same thing for the brown shoes and the white shirt, beige shirt, striped shirt. We found the amount of possible outcomes in the sample space. There are 12. We count coming down here. There are 12 in the sample space. We find the probability of choosing black shoes, white shirt, and gray pants at random. So we've got black shoes, white shirt, and gray pants. That's the combination at random. Since this is one of the 12 in the sample space, we've got one combination of 12 possible combinations. It's 1 12th. Now, what's the probability he'd choose the striped shirt instead of the white shirt? When we look at the striped shirt, either with the black shoes or the brown shoes. So we could go from the black shoes to the striped shirt, or we can go from the brown shoes to the striped shirt. Then he has the choice of blue or gray pants for the black shoes and striped shirt, or the blue and gray pants for the brown shoes and striped shirt. We've got one, two, three, four. There are four for the striped shirt, two for the black shoes and two for the brown shoes. That would give us four of 12 or one third. the probability of the striped shirt as the compound event would be one-third. Now, aside from making a tree diagram, we can use multiplication to find the sample space for Bob's clothing and his outfits. We know he has two pairs of shoes, and he has three shirts and two pairs of pants. We multiply two times three times two. Two times three is six and 6 times 2 is 12. 12 is the sample space, just like we found with the tree diagram. There's 12 different combinations of outfits. And using multiplication like this, multiplying the 2 times 3 times 2, this is called the fundamental counting principle. And you'll get into that more when you get into Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Let's try some higher order thinking. A bank PIN number consists of four digits that are 0 through 9. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 choices for the first digit of our pin. That means we have 10 choices for the second digit, 10 choices for the third digit, and 10 choices for the fourth digit. There's 10 choices because we're including 0 as one of the choices. So when you have a pin number, that's four digits. It can be zero through nine for each one of them. That means we have 10 choices for the first digit, 
10 choices for the second, for the third, and for the fourth. And we can use multiplication to find how many different number combinations there are for a four-digit pin. We multiply 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 10 choices times 10 choices times 10 choices times 10 choices. That means 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. That means there's 10,000 different possible combinations for a pin number. We can make a tree diagram to find the sample space for the compound event of flipping two coins. For coin one, we can either get a heads or a tails. For coin two, if coin one is heads, it might be heads or it might be tails. And if coin one is tails, coin two might be heads or it might be tails. We can make a list of the possible combinations. For coin one, we've got heads, and for coin two, it could be heads, so we have heads, heads. Or coin one could be heads, and coin two could be tails, so we have heads, tails. Or, we can move these over, if coin one is tails, then coin two might be heads, so we have tails, heads, or coin two might be tails. And we would have tails, tails. That means there are one, two, three, four. There are four possible combinations, four possible outcomes for flipping two coins. We finished the second part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the last part, finding probability using a list. Tree diagrams can be very helpful to show us all the possible combinations or outcomes of an event, but you wouldn't want to do it if we had too many, if there were 12 pairs of shoes and 30 shirts and 25 pairs of pants, it would be too difficult to make a tree diagram because it would just be too many combinations. So it works best when we have just a handful of things in our groups there. Then we can make the tree diagram and see how many possible combinations there are. I hope you're doing well and have a really great day. And please join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.